Okay, so this is my replication of Mags's test between a bifilar coil and a single coil. Um, I've set up a simple um, pulse generator circuit to um, collect our inductive kickback from this coil and send it to each one of these two coils and to see if there is any difference in um, the two coils as far as absorbing our inductive kickback from our circuit. Okay, so what we have here is my little receiver coil and you'll see I have a ferrite core in there. Uh, we'll be running at 500 hertz, so not too high, not too low, and um, we are eliminating any noisy push button switches um, such as Max was using. We have our little neon here, uh, which you'll see light up. And on our receiver coil, I have a 100 ohm resistor across it, so as we can measure the voltage across that resistor, which we'll be doing with um, my old scope, which I will switch on. <coughs> Cords going everywhere here. Okay, so um, my old scope is up there, as you can see. Now that is being powered by my battery and inverter, which is behind the um, multimeter there. So as we have a um, ground isolation between the circuit and the scope, and um, or should I say the scope and my signal generator up there which we will be using to um, switch our transistor on and off and the power supply 7.2 volts <coughs> is what we'll be supplying it at the moment so it's going to fire this coil up um, switch off our transistor our flyback is going to go through our little diode here and into either one of these coils. So this is a coil, uh, both coils are 230 turns each. Um, so 230 turns on a single one and 115 on each of the uh, windings of our bifilar coil. I simply have a little plug there, we can plug it together. Um, and disconnect it. We've disconnected it so we can read our um, capacitance between the two windings, which is about 1.6 nanofarads. And you'll see when I join the two together, they are hooked in series, of course. If they were um, not hooked in series and hooked in parallel, we would get no output because we'd have one turn going one way and the other turns going the other way which give us a net result of zero. Um, now inductance is one milli henry thereabouts um, and that is just in air core fashion at the moment. A single one 1.1 millihenries. At 1.1, so extremely close to being the same. We may have lost a very slight amount with our loop here, um, but as you can see, we're only talking 0 0.0102 of a millihenry. So down in the micro Henry range. So the coils are the same as far as our inductance are con our inductance is concerned. We're going to have a look at our resistance now between the two. And we do all this so we know we're dealing with pretty much the same situation with both coils.
The meter doesn't seem to be playing the oh, hang on. There's a problem right there. We're not on the uh, strip bit of the copper, we're on the insulation. Okay, so we've got that back in the shot, yes, 2.3 ohms on that one, which is our bifiller. And this one also 2.3 ohms. So, as far as our coils are concerned, they're pretty much identical, other than the fact that one is wound in the bifilar fashion and the other one is the, just a single winding. So um, all we're going to do is sit each coil on top of our pickup coil here, fire the system up and see what we get on our oscilloscope as far as the magnetic field um, strength that is going through that coil and across our 100 ohm load. So I noticed Megs did his with an open coil, as far as I know, but um, I put a load across our pickup coil, which could be making all the difference here. So we'll Till we switch our power on for our power supply. Okay, so the yellow channel on our scope is across our 100 ohm load, and the blue channel is across um, what's well across our coil after the diode. So um, that'll be just showing us the inductive kickback. As you can see, our little neon there has lit up. Don't think there's anything. Uh, we might have a loose diode connection there, which we will rectify right now. Yes, we can find in the plug properly. And now it is. So our little neon's gone out. Okay, so that's our single wound coil. going to go up here, zoom into our scope, okay so the yellow channel is showing us um, our snipper coil across our 100 ohm resistor and the blue channel is showing the inductive kickback spikes. So we have 44 millivolts RMS across our 100 ohm load from our uh, pick up or receiver coil, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is with our uh, single wound coil and 2 volts RMS on channel 2. Now that's um, not showing us right there because my probe is set to 10x and this is only set to 1x. Okay, that's better. So 20 volts RMS um, across our blue channel which is our inductive kickback and um, once again 44 millivolts across our load resistor. So we'll do this on the fly, I'm going to change the coils over, you should see the neon come on when I disconnect this coil which it does very brightly. So that was our single coil, we will now put our Oh, what we better do is put you back here where you belong first so you can see what's going on. Okay, so you can see our neon's lit up. We've taken our single coil off. We'll put our bifiller on the same spot. They're identical cores, so they will be sitting in identical positions on top of that sniffer coil. We should see our light go out when I attach this like so there we go, that is our bifilar coil on there now um, and we're going to have a look at our scope shot once again to see what difference we have right 
there. Okay, so uh, on here, well now we only have 40 millivolts RMS across our 100 ohm load, so that has actually gone down a bit. That is sitting on there properly. Um, and our channel 2 RMS voltage is still at 20 volts. So, and it is dropping down to 16 in this case. So, 40 millivolts RMS across our 100 ohm resistor. And it's still 20, it's fairly stable at 20 volts RMS on our inductive kickback. So the inductive kickback value is still the same but we've actually dropped um, in magnetic field value from our coil. So we're going to once again change that over to our other coil just to make sure our single wound coil. And our little neon comes back on. Once again we'll go up and have a look at the scope and the values with our single wound coil to right there. Hope it turns out right in the video. Uh, once again we can see 44 millivolts. 40, 44 millivolts. It's flicking between the two um, across our 100 ohm resistor, the load resistor and 20 volts RMS which is very stable and it's actually gone up to 24 so our um, inductive kickback value is higher with the single wound coil and our RMS voltage value across our 100 ohm resistor is also higher with the single wound coil which indicates to me a stronger magnetic field being produced by that coil, whereas the uh, bifilar coil seems to give us lower results each way. So um, I'm not sure um, as to what is going on with uh, Mags's set up but this one is certainly showing the opposite to what he is and we are doing it in very controlled conditions um, we measured the capacitance across that coil our bifilar coil we measured the inductance of the two we measured the resistance of the two they were the same uh, of course we didn't measure the capacitance value across our single wound coil um, we simply can't do it with a meter lock we were doing with the bifilar coil um, so yes, my results of this test, and I believe it's fairly controlled, is showing that the single wound coil is performing better than the bifilar coil, and um, it seems to be opposite to what Mags was showing, so maybe he will get different results when he gets something like this set up some very clean switching, um, multiple pulses and a load on his second area I believe will make a big difference and um, that would have to be done if we were going to use this bifilar coil for anything other than just sitting there um, putting an EMF across an open coil which I'm sure we're not going to be doing um, the receiver whatever that is whether it's another coil um, or a rotor or whatever is going to place a load on the coil which I believe is making the difference here so we might just drop this down to 100 Hertz while we're here 
and we will see if we get anything different. Okay, so we're now at 100 hertz. Yep. And um, we still have, we actually have 24 to 28 millivolts RMS across our 100 ohm load resistor at the moment and still 20 volts RMS. Um, of course, the peak voltages are those are different. Channel 2 peak to peak is 360 volts. So, um, quite a good wallop going into that coil so as far as their voltage is concerned and so we have 24 28 millivolts and once again we'll swap over and we'll um, put you down here first zoom you out we will swap over our single coil for the bifiller Oil. All the old neon's tonguing now. The purple glows, I hope it doesn't blow, otherwise there goes my transistor. So I'll try and get this on pretty quick. So um and there's a very good indication that this bifilar coil is not soaking up the inductive kickback like our single coil was because that neon is still slightly on. But anyway, we'll have another look at our scope. Okay, so we have 24, 28, so that is flicking between 24 and 28. Volts RMS across our uh, millivolts RMS across our load resistor, and we're still steady on 20 volts RMS um, on our inductive kick bot, uh, kick back, uh, still 340, 336 to 340 volts peak to peak. Um, you will see a slight spike down there. It's probably due to the very slight inductance, uh, very slight capacitance that the um, diode has. But um, we have about, uh, what have we got? we've got 300 volts. Um, this is the value of our inductive kickback. But like I said, that little neon there now. camera will focus as you can see right there is still glowing which means that this bifilar coil is not soaking up inductive kickback as good as our single wound coil so that's my test um, and like I said that's fairly controlled our coils as far as inductance and resistance go are very evenly matched um, Capacitance across the coil uh, as required, and in this situation, it has made no difference. In fact, this one actually soaks up the pulses better than that one because the uh, little neon is currently on slightly. Okay, uh, well, there you go. We'll see um, where Mags ends up when he puts some sort of load um, on his bifilar coil, whether the uh, story changes or not. And um, I'm not sure whether he has cores in there or not either, so that may make a difference as well. Alright, thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you next video when we have a look at my. Um, new coil design and it's going to be on a pulse motor of all things. Cheers guys.